Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So it's the end of another month and therefore we have a wrap up today. Uh, I have my jasmine pearl green tea from Harney and Sons, which is so refreshing as we go into the warmer months of the year. And I finished five books this month, which is I think how many I finished last month as well. Uh, so we'll just quickly go over those and I'll tell you a little bit about each of those. The first one being Giant Days, Volume 5. So this is probably my favorite graphic novel series of all time. It is so charming and so vibrant. It has some of the most colorful, fun artwork, and I just absolutely adore it. It always brings me back to my college days and reminds me of my college friends and the shenanigans that we got up to. Um, this one is going into their second year at university and it's set in Britain and it's just hilarious. The three best friends in this are so funny and if you haven't picked this up I highly recommend it to anyone because I just think it's the funniest and cutest thing ever. And then I also finished A Closed in Common Orbit by Becky Chambers. So I absolutely adored the first book in this kind of companion trilogy, uh, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. That one was phenomenal and it got so much hype on booktube that was so worth it. And I know a lot of people have been down on this one saying that it's not as good or that they just didn't feel the same connection to it. And I would say I didn't feel the same connection to it initially, but Becky Chambers' writing is so phenomenal. She just does a really good job drawing you in. And whereas I referred to, a, uh, sorry, A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet as a kind of episodic novel, so it just felt like little episodes of a show, this one was very much a story. So it was alternating between the perspectives of two characters. I can't really get into which two characters without causing some spoilers for the first book because while they are companion books, this one very much comes after The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. So it goes back and forth between the two characters and typically when, when there is that alternating perspective, I'm wanting really badly to get back to the other perspective. I didn't feel that way with this one. Both perspectives were really interesting and they, it's, we stayed with one character just long enough for you to get information and then we'd go back to the other one. So I thought it was really well done. I just think that Becky Chambers is a master at the crafts, like at the craft of writing. She's fantastic and I definitely recommend this. I would say don't go into it thinking it's going to be another long way to a small angry planet because it is very different. It is much slower in my opinion than that book but it packs a punch and I think it's phenomenal. And then for my birthday I got this book which is The Willful Princess and the Piebald Prince by Robin Hobb and I sat down and read it the same day that I got it because I was so excited. I have finished all of the books in the realm of the Elderling fantasy arc and so I'm just like really wanting more from that universe and this was exactly what I needed. So it is a novella and it's two different stories that kind of tie in about the Willful Princess and the Piebald Prince and it brings in some backstory to the magic in the the Farseer universe mostly that we kind of needed in my opinion. So it does add something to the story that we didn't already have. So it's it's a great kind of folk tale, but it does what a folk tale is meant to do. It, it brings history into it and it basically um, in the overarching series, Realm of the Elderling series, there's a lot of talk about um, the piebald prince and about the wit. And this gives a lot of background to the wit and where the animosity of the wit came from. And it's just so good. The characters are really interesting. And I just, yeah, I highly recommend this if you've read the Realm of the Elderling series. And then I read this honker of a book. So this is Obsidio, which is the third book in the Illuminae Files, and it is the culmination of the trilogy. And I 
felt like this one was a little slow to get into. So again, I can't say a whole lot about the plot only because it brings together the two other, so Gemina and the Illuminae, it brings together both of those plots into this culmination and um, it's done really cleverly. I do like the way that it does sort of, it bounces you between the different perspectives. So there's, you know, th there's several groups and you're going back and forth between them. I did feel like this was one of those where I would want to get back to the other perspective at times, but I did find this really interesting. Um, it continued with that really like suspenseful and um, tension building kind of post-apocalyptic kind of thing. Um, it had you know, the same style where it's done in chats and, um, dictations or, um, I can't, I, I always blank on what it's called, where there's somebody that's actually like transcribing, tra transcriptions of scenes, video footage. So, um, it, it was very similar to the other books. I feel like this one didn't pack as much of a punch because there wasn't, so in both Gemina and Illuminae, there's some big, like, holy crap moments. Um, I didn't feel like this had that. Like there were some things that were startling and really tension building and upsetting, but not in the same way as the other two. So I, I felt like while this was a good conclusion and the very end of it does kind of have a little shock value, um, at the same time, I don't feel like it was as good as the other two. And then the last book that I finished on the last day of March was The Fountains of Paradise by Arthur C. Clarke. This was the book that my husband picked for me to read uh, when his card came up in Bookopoly. He's been wanting me to read this forever, um, and finally I got around to it. So what even to say about this? So this is obviously a science fiction classic. I believe it was nominated, yeah, for the Hugo and Nebula Awards. Oh, it won the Hugo and Nebula Awards. Um, basically, this is, in my opinion, a book about hubris. So, essentially, the plot of the book is that this architect who built this huge bridge that bridged two continents, uh, he is continually trying to think of the next big thing, and he decides that he wants to build this elevator to space, essentially. So he wants to connect Earth to space where, you know, it eliminates noise pollution and the pollution that rockets are causing, and it makes it more feasible and less expensive for people to go to space. But at the same time, like, this is his big, great achievement. He wants his name on it. He wants this to be his thing, what he's remembered for. So the whole book is about him trying to get this, you know, to happen. And once we finally got into the part where like things were happening and he was making steps towards the elevator's progress, that was interesting. Um, it, the very beginning of it, I had a really hard time getting into this book. At one point, my husband had to go back and read what I had read to try to explain to me what was happening because the first probably 10 chapters, you're not really clear on what is the timeline. So what, what characters or what people are in the same timeline and which timeline is the one that you're like reading on. So... I was really confused by that and the flashbacks even now don't make a whole lot of sense. Like they tie in in little ways and it all is about kind of like this original king and his hubris and then this architect and his hubris. And so it ties in in that way but other than that connection it was just like I don't understand why some of this stuff is necessary because it's ne like we passed the halfway of the Point of the book and we really never talk about some of these things that we talked about in such detail that really felt pointless. So I don't know. I didn't love this. The writing was a little bit hard to kind of slog through at times. There's a lot of like intense science engineering stuff that was not my jam. Um, but I'm glad I read it because um, it was something that me and my husband could talk about and I just haven't read a lot of classic science fiction and Arthur C. Clarke is really, 
classic science fiction. So I am glad I read it in the end, just not one that I super loved or would recommend. So that is it. Those are the five books that I read this month. I had a pretty good reading month. Um, I am hoping that that will carry into April. I am wanting to get a lot of things read in April. Like I have a lot of things planned to read in April because May is going to be just bananas for me. So I'm not expecting to actually get much reading done in the month of May, but we'll see. Uh, but anyways, I hope that you guys had a wonderful day. If you've read any of these, I would love to hear your thoughts. I am interested on anybody who has read The Fountains of Paradise, what you thought of it. Um, did you find it kind of hard to get into or a little bit confusing? Or is that just me? Uh, but yeah, I would love to talk to you guys in the comments and I will see you next time. Bye!